Today we've got another tutorial for you guys in our Luminar 4 software. It's a great tool in a lot of aspects, a fantastic editor, but today we're going to be focusing on landscape photography. It's got some outstanding tools for you guys to be able to turn something like this into this. And believe it or not, just a few minutes. Let's check it out. Welcome back and here today we're in our Luminar 4 editing software and we're checking out some landscape photos. This is a very capable editor in a lot of ways but today we're just going to do a quick tutorial on some landscapes and show you a few tips and tricks. If you're new here and you haven't seen one of my videos before, welcome. My name is Stefan Malik and I do a lot of filmmaking and photography tutorials, news and reviews. So if you do like this video consider maybe hitting that like and subscribe button. Let's dive in. So here we are, we've got our first picture here and the layout and the overall platform is just very simple and intuitive to use. We've got something called looks up here which we can use immediate presets, we can get our AI going to make choices to basically get a really good baseline. And over here we have all of our tools. Right now we're in the essentials tab and this is basically everything and more that you'd find in Lightroom including our basic adjustments, shadows and highlights color temperature and whatnot. And then we have our AI tools, color, details enhancer, denoising, everything that you could possibly ever want in an editor really. Next we have our creative tab and this is going to allow us to go even deeper with some really cool and unique looking filters as well as tools that we'll get into a little bit. We have our portrait tab which is yeah, for portraits and we're going to cover that in a different video. So don't get too excited about that today. And then we have our pro tab, which is gonna be just a little bit more in depth. These are the things like dodging and burning and some contrast. We've got some filters, some split toning, everything to really dial in that picture the way you want it. But let's jump in and look at a few things today to quickly take this picture to the next level. I'm gonna take my looks off for now and we're just gonna basically use a few things to get us going. I'm going to jump right into AI Enhance and this is kind of like hitting the auto button in Lightroom. It's going to kind of decide what looks best for this picture. It's going to make some decisions for us and it's not going to go too overboard. So let's bring it up to about 65 and maybe enhance that sky a little bit because why not. And let's have a look at what that actually did. We can do that by pressing the before and after button right here. And right off the bat, you can see it's added, looks like some sharpness, some contrast, maybe played with the highlights and the shadows a little bit. That looks really nice. So that's a great baseline, but let's take it to the next level. AI structure is a great tool to basically, yeah, change the structure or maybe around your subject and the background to make choices uh, to either take away focus or bring focus to parts of the image. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Let's pump it up maybe to about halfway up and boost it a little bit and let's look what that looks like before and after once again. So even more dramatic really bringing out some detail in those mountains and those trees. I like it. So let's jump right over to now our creative tab and let's go over to an amazing tool called the AI sky replacement. Now for me, this is one of the best features of this entire software. It's an amazing time saver. If you like to swap the skies out, this is really the way to do it. And no, it's not perfect. It does kind of stumble from time to time, but for the most part, it's incredible. Let's have a look. So here we are on the right here in our creative tab. And our sky here for me is just really not that interesting. It's a little bit bland and boring. So all I'm gonna do is open that up click on sky selection and let's pick a blue sky. It does take a bit to render and again that's one of the things to notice about this software. It can be a little bit slow at times so you better have a good computer or be very patient. And that's just the truth. So right off the bat that looks phenomenal. And again look at the difference between those two skies and what a big difference that makes to the image. Incredible. And that's one click. So let's check out a few more options. There's lots of 
presets that kind of come with it. You can also bring your own images. Let's look at a sunset, for example. And just like that, that looks incredible. And not only is it putting a new sky in, but it's blending your entire image, the exposure, the white balance, and really making that whole image look as though that sky belongs. That is technology. That's amazing. So let's take it even a step further. Let's flip that sky. Maybe I don't like it that particular way. And look at that nice sunset. That's just beautiful. But what does every sunset need? It needs sun rays, that's right. And we have that option. There's a tool called sun rays right here and we can crank that up to see what that looks like. And we're gonna do it all the way up just for dramatic effect, let it render. And we're gonna place that sun center. And let's drag it over to that nice sunset sky over there. And you can see it changing and you can actually see those sun rays moving and changing depending on where you're putting it even below the horizon and it's just phenomenal how it knows the depth of the image so i kind of like that right there and we can alter and change lots of the things to do with this these rays here in the custom advanced settings here we can make those rays warmer we can make the sun warmer the sun radius we can play with sun glow we can change the length of the sun rays itself and the amount obviously i've cranked here and let's bring that down to a reasonable level. And if we really want to have those rays shining, we can even up the penetration and just really get that amazing looking sunset. So that's what, three minutes worth of work. And already we have a, an image that is relatively bland and boring and we've got an amazing sunset. And that's pretty amazing if you ask me. Let's keep going. So here's our image, we've got a nice sunset now, a completely different sky, a completely different feel and look to this image. And let's look one more time at before and after. Before and after, what an incredible difference. But now let's make a few tweaks to our pro section here. And for me, I wanna dodge and burn this just a little bit to make it a bit more dramatic. But actually, before we do that, why don't we go back into the creative tab and look at this dramatic tab here. And why don't we just go ahead and see what that does. So if I up that a bit, that's gonna go ahead and use that AI to make it just a little bit more dramatic. It looks like it's increased maybe the sharpness, the contrast, and again, before and after, what a difference. So let's go back into our pro tab now and do a little bit of dodging and burning. We're gonna click on start painting and automatically the strength is set to 50% and I really recommend you going down to maybe five or 10 to start if you're gonna darken. And that's just so you don't go overboard. And then just start painting. And there's our dodge and burning finished. And let's just go right back into our Essentials tab and play with the light panel. I'm gonna give this a little bit of curve here. I'm gonna bring those highlights up and the shadows down just a bit. And maybe play with that smart contrast just a little. See the difference that that makes. And for me, that looks pretty good. So let's have one more look at before and after. There's before and there's after. And that's gonna to start to look really good for me. Let's have a look at the before and after slider here. Here's before and here's after. Absolutely incredible. And keep in mind, this is done through a tutorial, so it's taken me a bit extra time to talk you through it, but really this could be done in just a few minutes. What software can you do that in? That's incredible. Without masking, without layers, it's just an overall incredible, fun and efficient program. But like I said before, it's not always perfect. So let's check out another photo that I have here to show you what it does in a situation that I might struggle with a sky replacement, for example. So here's a photo that I've taken and stitched together in Lightroom and brought in. And I just wanna show you how it doesn't always work out. There's always gonna be needing usually a little bit of tweaking 
And you don't want a program to do everything yourself, at least I don't. I want to have full control for the most part. And if it's doing a lot of the work, I want to be able to change what I want back to what I want it to be at. And here, and here's our second photo. This is a panorama that I've stitched together in Lightroom and brought over. And I want to show you just what happens when everything doesn't go perfectly. And no program is perfect. It is AI, but it's just going off complex algorithms. There is no perfect, but I wanted to show you guys what happens when it doesn't really work out and how to kind of fix it. Here we have an incredibly deep photo. It's a very close foreground and then it goes very, very far. You can see those, those clouds in the background, they go for a long time. So this is really gonna be a challenge for a different background, but let's see how it does. If we go ahead and pick a sky selection here, blue, that did a pretty decent job, but it actually doesn't really know where the horizon is here. It kind of struggles by replacing those back clouds and let's check another example, sunset one. And yeah, you can see it did struggle a bit here, blending the two together. So you'd actually have to go ahead and get that mask out and really just brush it in. And you can see it rate changing there. But when you do do a mask, it looks like it actually doesn't blend it as well. It's really not gonna do all the things that it did if you just let it completely take it over automatically. And you can't really rely on a program to do everything for you, can you? Nor do you really want to as an artist, you want it to be your project, your baby. But this is a really fun program to work with and I hope that this has shown you how quickly and easily you can make some changes to your landscape photos and make some pretty dramatic differences. So let's leave it at that. Of course, no program is perfect, but it is a very fun, efficient, and overall good editor, I would say. You can use it as a standalone program or a plugin in Photoshop and Lightroom. And if you are interested in learning more about this program, check out my full tutorial on it or more tutorials on just little tools like this one. If you're interested in picking up this software, if you don't actually own it yet and you wanna pull the trigger, Look in the description for the affiliate link that will save you a little bit of money. I've worked out a bit of a deal with the developer for you guys, so I hope that helps. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure you drop them below. As always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you in the next one.